Houston, are you ready for the event? Houston, are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station ready. Let's do this. University of San Diego, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is the University of San Diego. How do you hear me? Loud and clear. How about myself? Wonderful. Matt, how are you? Uh, having a blast uh, hanging out in the Columbus Module International Space Station. Wonderful. Well, first of all, it's great to be on with you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, more than happy to be up here and get a chance to talk to you guys uh, at University of San Diego. Uh, Matt, to begin with, if you could kind of set the scene for us uh, down here on Earth, uh, where are you at within the ISS, and what is the, the room used for? The room used for? Uh, right now, uh, we're in the Columbus module. It's a European Space Agency module, and the International Space Station is, is very much international. Uh, I'm sitting in the European Space Station module. I'm actually looking past you on the camera to my crewmate, Tracy Dyson, who's over in the a Japanese module setting up some experiments. And Mike just flew by one of the US modules. And uh, I wish you could just be in my eyes right now and just see. I, I'm getting to talk to you guys. They're, they're work, working pretty hard right now, uh, we're crushing through experiments, uh, which is most of what we do all day. In fact, I'm wearing these really tight uh, cuffs on my thighs right now as we evaluate some of the fluid shifts that go inside the human body. We're trying to keep my f fluids down in the lower part of my body today for an experiment. In fact, surrounded by all kinds of hardware we've been using all day today. So this is an orbiting laboratory. That's the scene. Uh, we got to have a really cool ride to get up here, but I think that sets the scene for you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, if you could walk me through, what, what's a, what's a, an, an average day like for, for you and the crew on the ISS? Uh, one of the best parts about an average day is there's not really an average day. Uh, we've got an incredible group of folks on the ground and around the world, for that matter, that, that plan out our day for us. It's super convenient. You wake up, there's a computer screen that tells you what to do. It's down to the minute, uh, and you execute. And, and most days, you know, I'm a laboratory technician. I'm, I'm setting up experiments for uh, what we, you know, primary investigators, we call them, or researchers around the world that are coming up with new experiments for us to do. They work for years to set those experiments up. They launch them to space station, and, and we get to interact with them for maybe 10, 30, maybe sometimes an hour to make their experiment on space become a reality. Uh, other times, I'm a technician, right? I'm fixing the space station to set it up for the next experiment or repairing something that's broken. Or on Saturdays, I'm a janitor. So we're uh, all kinds of different skills, and we're just following the timeline to execute. Um, you touched on this, but if you could if you could elaborate a little bit, your your primary duties as commander of uh, Crew Eight. So my primary duties as commander of Crew Eight is is first and foremost, uh, it's a team effort to get uh, a small capsule off Earth, accelerate it to seventeen thousand five hundred miles an hour to rendezvous with the International Space Station that's been up here for twenty years. Uh, so each of us on board the crew have roles and responsibilities to play. Mission Control Houston, uh, Mission Control SpaceX, all work really hard to get us up here. Uh, as commander of the vehicle, my job ultimately that means that the responsibility of executing that safely falls on me in the end. Uh, that means, hey, do we, you know, knowing the procedures on the way up, reviewing them every now and then uh, to remain proficient up here, uh, and then providing an escape vehicle for us to go home if need be. And so that means reviewing the procedures. The other day we practiced, you know, egressing ourselves into the Dragon in though, as though we had to go home and, and ultimately being responsible for the safe execution of getting us to the space station and back home again. Wonderful. Um, you, you led me right into my next question. So what is, what is something about... Um, you know, space flight and this mission that you didn't anticipate. Uh, I know you talked just a couple of years ago about all the training that goes into a mission like this. What's something can you that you can point to that um, you hadn't anticipated or uh, something that was different from what you had anticipated? 
I mean, there's there's so many things that were different. I think something that's kind of understandable, maybe relatable, that comes to mind is you can't you can't really just set anything down and have expect it to stay there. And we had we learned in training that that would be the case. They told us things would float. They told us things would disappear. Uh, but they really do all the time. And learning just to to find a place and you know now I'm I'm worried when I go back to Earth I'm going to be looking for Velcro everywhere because I I really enjoy <laughs> the Velcro on my pants and the Velcro on the ceiling up here. Yeah, and I see you uh, uh, demonstrating uh, the microgravity with the microphone. That was very cool. Oh, absolutely. The, even the microphone has uh, has Velcro on it, so I could stick it to the ceiling or stick it to my pants or somewhere. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Um, you you talked about the research, uh, the daily research you're doing. Is there um, is there an overall experiment um, or a main experiment that the crew is responsible for during your time up there that you could talk about? Uh, there's experiments going on daily. So many that they, to, to pick a few. I, I've been super interested in some of the 3D printing we've been doing, specifically uh, tissues, like human tissues. Been working on 3D printing some uh, some cardiac uh, tissues, some vessels. Um, all that is super entertaining. But I think the ultimate experiment on space station is really ourselves. Uh, the more people mm -hmm. we can get into a space, the more the bigger the sample size we can get, so we can understand what happens to humans when they go to space and what happens to their body. And so th the biggest experiment up here is really us. In fact, for seven hours a day, I'm, I'm subject of a research experiment where they're taking all kinds of my eyeball pressures, my blood pressures, ultrasounds all over my body all day today. We are the experiment. Great, wonderful. Um, if I could take you back a little bit, Matt. Um, if you know, I think we're really interested, especially at USD, in knowing where were you when you found out that you'd be leading uh, this mission? If you could just kind of uh, provide the anecdote, you know, where were you? What was the feeling like when you were first told about this mission? Uh, it was it was a bit surreal. I remember I was at home. I think we were uh, setting the table for dinner with my daughters and my wife, and I, and it got a quick message about it. And uh, you, you knew that it was coming at some point, uh, but mm -hmm. it's not really real until you're told. And so hearing that come through, I remember for a moment, I just uh, kind of walked away for a minute and I sat down in, in our uh, master bathroom on the, on the bathtub for a minute and just kind of took it all in and be like, wow, this is, this is real, this is happening, this is, this is actually gonna happen. But just had to take a minute or two by myself just to sit there and really ponder it. And, and then I imagine from there, the work got going pretty quickly to, to start preparing, right? Absolutely. I mean, we're always in training. We're always in Houston. All the astronaut corps is always in training and always preparing. But then the, the, the notch gets stepped up a bit as you increase your tempo and the focus shifts from, from doing some sort of ground jobs to, to mainly focus just on executing the mission. Uh, you talked a little bit about, uh, you know, the surreal feeling. Um, I wanted to uh, take you to the actual countdown. Um, the mission was postponed a couple day, a couple times due to weather. Um, if you could just put into words the feeling when mission control starts counting backwards from 10 and and you know this is this is really happening the mission is is a go uh managing what you're thinking and your emotions and all of these things in an operational environment has always been fascinating throughout my career when you're going to go do something risky or something intense uh there's always this flurry of emotions in the in the anticipation of the event and oftentimes I found the anticipation a day or two or a couple hours prior uh, far more difficult to manage than the actual event. Once you're in the event, it's game on. You're going to do what you've trained to do. And that countdown is just exhilarating. You're, you're thinking, OK, I want to remember this moment for the rest of my life. So you're focused on seeing the things around you and feeling the things. And you're consciously feeling those things. Uh, I'm telling myself, OK, I want to remember this. I want to remember this, feel this, remember this, write this down later but also super hyper-focused on the task at hand and remembering your procedures and your comm calls so that you know you can execute safely. So it's, it's a bimodal distribution of emotions through there. Mm -hmm. um, what, about, what about when you officially docked, safely docked at the station and that hatch opened? I think that was the first um, video that uh, everyone back here on Earth received um, was the hatch opening and you and the crew seeing your colleagues for the first time. If you could briefly talk about what that moment was like. So it takes you a little bit back to training. You, you know, we're, we're training in six-month intervals apart from people, and there's lots of international travel. And so 
I hadn't seen those crewmates of mine in, you know, very much at all in the past year and a half. And it was, you know, it's rough when you don't get to see your good friends for a long time. And now you get to be reunited with your friends by opening up a hatch and flying onto a space station. Like, I, I don't think you could capture how good it is to see old friends like that that you've been wanting to see for such a long time. And, and we flew through the hatch and it just instantly ended up in a cluster of hugs. Wonderful. Um, other than misplacing instruments, what is uh, what has been the toughest part about getting used to to life in orbit? Uh, I don't think it's too different from any major um, move or change in your life on Earth. And so, anytime you maybe pick up your house and you move somewhere else, or you go through a major life change, it's just the adaptation of just setting yourself into a new routine, getting established in that, and getting comfortable with that. Anywhere you go, it was very similar coming up here. Okay, I got a new routine. I got to do this when I wake up. I got to go to this spot. I got to do this thing. I got to manage my stuff this way. I'm going to keep my spoon there. Like all of those little pieces, getting yourself set in a routine takes a couple weeks. But it's, it's not unlike moving on Earth or a major life change on Earth. What has been your uh, what's been your favorite part so far? Oh, so many things, and that's tough because there's so many future things that are going to happen too. I love flying the Dragon. I'm super excited to go fly. We're going to go fly in a, in a week or so. We're going to go undock from the space station and orbit around and come back and redock on the top part of it. That's super exciting. Uh, there's all these operational things that are super exciting, like spacewalks or doing certain experiments. Or the other day, I got to take a picture. We were deploying CubeSats, and that was exhilarating. I took like 800 pictures of CubeSats being shot out the space station. Those, those operational things are super exciting. But really, the, the day to day of getting to fly everywhere you go, like since you're a kid, you've dreamed of flying. Most kids I know dream of flying, and I get to do it all day, every day, just to go to work, to go. Like after this, I got to go get a drink of water, and I get to fly the whole way there through the space station. <laughs> um, I have a couple of USD specific questions for you. Um, what would you like to say to undergraduates and everybody else here at USD um, who may have dreams of uh, uh, following your footsteps and becoming astronauts and engaging in space flight? Oh man, I, there's so many pieces of advice, but I think the simplest to really understand is just go do what you love. Spaceflight is just on an exponential curve of growth right now that's insane, and we're going to need everyone. We need all types, all backgrounds, uh, all kinds of experiences. We move ourselves to the moon and into Mars. And so in that vein, go do what you love. Go do what you're passionate about, and then it will never, ever in your life feel like work, and you just get to do what you love every day. So pursue those things. You'll also be much better at things if you love them because you'll work harder at them. And so go do those things and then come join us. Come join us on the moon. Come join us when we go to Mars. Um, wonderful. A uh, couple more for you, Matt. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are interested to know what the solar eclipse was like from the ISS. I know uh, it looked very different than down here on Earth. If you could briefly explain that. Uh, I mean, I think a general piece of advice is there's so, there's a certain number of events in your life that you just know are going to be ones you're going to want to remember forever. Uh, and I received advice a long time ago uh, from someone that's a much longer story about, you know, taking time to take mental pictures of events. And so, and not just a picture with a phone or a picture with a with a camera. And these are one of those events that I walked into knowing, okay, I want to just experience this. You know, I can very clearly remember the birth of both of my children. I can very clearly some remember some moments in the Navy that I wanted to remember. And so this, walking into that, the same attitude and just wanting to go look out the window and see it. And it was, it was amazing. I've seen eclipses from the earth. They're awesome. But being able to see it from this perspective, it's just this very dark cloud and one of my jobs was to take pictures from the wharf and had all of these expectations about how to do it and just was thrown off by how many f-stops it changed the camera and that's a nerdy term but how many f-stops was completely unexpected how dark it really was wonderful um matt usd's we're celebrating our 75th anniversary this year um there's a lot going on um, everybody back here was hoping that you could provide a shout out to Toreros here at Alcala Park and around the world, um, if you're okay with that. Um, yeah. Wonderful. I get, we'll give you a shout out, of course. Uh, I'm, 
NASA astronaut Matthew Dominic here on the International Space Station, University of San Diego class of 2005. To all of my Toreros at Acala Park and around the world, congratulations on 75 years. Go Toreros. Wonderful, thank you so much, Matt. Uh, that'll make everybody really happy. Um, I have, I believe, one more for you. Um, see one more. Um, a lot of people have asked me that they wanted to ask you, you know, what, what's, an, what's on an astronaut's bucket list? So you've traveled to the International Space Station. I know you've, you've talked about um, this is step one, but uh, where do you go from here in, in your perspective? Oh, man. Uh, where do you go from here? You've focused so long on getting here to the space station for so many years, and so many friends and family have sacrificed and, and contributed to me getting here. Now, for me, it's all about giving back when I go back home uh, to the max mm -hmm. extent practical. Uh, you know, you take so much in your life, and you want to give back uh, more than you've taken in your life. So it's, it's all about giving back when I go home, and it's uh, seeing the Earth here you realize how thin the atmosphere is and how what very little separation humans have from space and the fragility of our civilization so want to give back but also want to go see the world like i've been orbiting over parts of the earth that have just been absolutely inspirational looking outside there are parts of the earth i'd never thought to travel that i want to go see like the western side uh, of south america looks wildly fascinating from space i just want to go see it myself so I guess you could add those kinds of travels around the world to my bucket, bucket list. Parts of Africa I never thought I would want to go to. I definitely want to go see now. Very cool. Um, you, so you demonstrated uh, microgravity with the microphone. Before we uh, sign off here, is there, is there anything else you can do? There you go. Give it a little spin or? <laughs> Oh, that's Does that cool. help? <laughs> that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for your time. Um, again, everybody back here uh, is, is so thrilled and proud and has been following your every step. In particular, uh, the engineering school, everybody over there is just so psyched and has been following the, the mission so far every day. So um, we all appreciate your time um, and uh, safe journey. Thank you so much. Go Toreros. Thanks, Matt. Take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Station signing off. Thank you. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.